Hello everyone, welcome to session 8 of LTEC 676, Social and Ethical Issues in Educational Technology. In this video, we're going to cover three topics. First, I want to highlight the mid-semester course evaluation. Then I want to talk a little bit about downtown school, the school referred to in Christo Sims' 2017 book, Disruptive Fixation. Then I want to tie the first chapter of Disruptive Fixation to some of the themes of the class. So let's get started. So as you all know, week eight roughly marks the middle of the semester. And with that, I put together a short mid-semester course evaluation that I'd like you to pay attention to. This evaluation is designed to get your opinion on how the class is going and what might be improved over the rest of the semester. This evaluation is an anonymous and voluntary. You don't have to take it, although I really would appreciate your feedback. It's not very long. It'll only take you about five minutes to complete. There's a link in Canvas, and you can also follow the link here as well. So thanks for getting to that. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about downtown school and Quest to Learn. Now, in the first chapter of Disruptive Fixation, Sims talks about downtown school for design, media, and technology, which he simply nicknames downtown school. And he argues that the founding of the downtown school was based on the following problem. We're living in a radically new, interconnected, technologically saturated, and unequal era, and our inherited educational institutions are woefully out of date to deal with this unequal modern era. So that's the problem. And so the solution to that problem was to create a new school specifically for today's digital kids. This new school would have an entire curriculum and pedagogy organized around game-based learning, and students would not be passive listeners or absorbers of information. Instead, they would be active learners, learning to be creative makers, remixers, and hackers of technology and culture. So that's kind of the premise for downtown school. Sims never actually tells us what school he's talking about. I don't know if you know or not, but I actually lived and taught in New York City for about 12 years. I went to grad school there as well. And I happen to know what school Sims is talking about. In fact, it, Sims leaves a footnote in his dissertation, which the book is actually based on. And he says, all institutional and personal names are pseudonyms. That said, given the school's uniqueness, I don't anticipate being able to preserve its anonymity from readers who seek to identify it. So what school is he actually talking about? The name of the school that he's actually talking about is called Quest to Learn. And Quest to Learn is a public 6 through 12 school with an innovative educational philosophy developed by top educators and game theorists at the Institute of Play with funding from the MacArthur Foundation. I encourage you to go to the Quest to Learn website and learn a little bit more about it. It's actually fascinating. The school itself, one of the co-founders was Katie Salen, pictured here in the bottom right. And the school, Quest to Learn, leverages game-based learning, which they defined as carefully designed, student-driven systems that are narrative-based, structured, interactive, and immersive. As you can see here on the website, they talk about why games might be beneficial. And so let's watch a little bit of video produced by Quest to Learn about the school itself. To me, play is the most central part of being human. You know, it's really at the core of how we learn. It's at the center of how we form relationships with other people and have a chance to test out ideas, express ourselves, uh, fail in ways that are incredibly safe and in ways that we learn from going forward. 
And it really is a way of being in the world that I think is incredibly critical at a time when we actually have a ton of problems that we need to solve. And we need to draw on a kind of power of creativity, a power of self-expression, and a power of doing things together that play really enables. I think that Quest is particularly interesting because not only is it play-based, but I do think it's narrative-based. And I think that people are narrative based creatures, we think in terms of stories. And once we are learning within a story, it becomes more interesting to us than if we're just learning for the sake of learning or memorization. Greetings, TWTW students. I'm Dr. Smalls. I work for Shrinkly Labs. I am honored to say you are invited to compete in the 2013 Shrinkly Labs Cell City Design Competition. So the Quest model to me is helping students understand that when you go and start your career, your boss is not gonna say, what is X plus two? They're gonna ask you, well, this is the problem, I need you to solve it. These are the people that you need to work with. Let me know what you need. Please work on this problem. So. My idea of the Quest model is problem solving. Quest to Learn for me is a fun place to learn, at the same time learn and having fun. It's just everyone accepts you, everyone um, likes your ideas. It's all about iteration and never give up and just keep trying to make it the best that you can. Quest to Learn is at one level a vision and an oasis for those who are hungry for new innovation in the learning space, but what's so great about it, what IOP is proving every day, is that there are practical tools that are going to be created in Quest to Learn through Institute of Play that are going to power a very, very substantial reform movement. And the fact that teachers love what's going on at Quest to Learn, and the fact that there's so much iteration on the good practices at Quest to Learn in so many different organizations around the country means that the Institute of Play has really started a learning revolution. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of context about Quest to Learn. Now, as Sims argues, this downtown school, in other words, Quest to Learn, was as well supported as just about any experimental new public school could hope to be. It received millions of dollars from a prestigious philanthropic foundation. It spent more than $200 million on related research projects and interventions focused on digital media and learning. The school had more laptops than students. It had the latest hardware and software for making media technologies. And it also had one of only two semi-immersive embodied learning environments in the world. In addition to all of that hardware and software, it also had teachers, administrators, and staff, as well as an in-house team of media technology designers and curriculum specialists. Now, if we connect this back to what we've been talking about in terms of equity and equality, the downtown schools really started with unparalleled inputs and processes. And we'll get to outcomes a little bit later on. That was one of the premises behind starting Quest to Learn, is what if you completely reconfigured all of the inputs and all of the processes, what would happen? And we can see that there's an immediate connection to the instructional core, which we talked about last week. The content of the school was all about games and game-based learning. The teachers and what they knew and what they taught were totally different than traditional public school staff and administrators. And the students actually have to apply. They have to want to go to Quest to Learn. In that sense, you're targeting all three legs of the instructional core, the student, the teacher, and the content. Now, when Quest for Learn launched, it had incredible publicity. Local, national, and international news organizations produced and ran hopeful stories about the new school. And Sims writes, the downtown school was celebrated as one of the most innovative and promising attempts to redesign schooling in the first decades of the new millennium. One that swept away antiquated educational conventions 
and replace them with an innovative and improvisational culture that was more akin to a Silicon Valley startup than a traditional public school. Sims also writes that the downtown school was a centerpiece in an ambitious new philanthropic initiative that aspired to reinvent educational systems for the 21st century. So let's take a look at some of this publicity. So here is CNN's coverage of downtown school. In order to get ready in the morning or get ready at a certain time, we put on a song and say, you have to beat the song. We would play Johnny Cash or Elvis or a song from Wicked. So when I listen to the concept of the school, I love it, I think it's really exciting, but it's, it's a big roll of the dice. Be strategic about where you land. There you go, you have an entire board to select from. My name is Amir Murad. I'm a teacher at Quest to Learn. I teach a class called The Way Things Work. It is a, an integrated science and math class. The application of that math really you know, takes root in the way things work and we start to use you know, the fractions, decimals, percentages in the classroom for our activities. So they kind of get to see it on both, from both perspectives. There's a purely kind of math, mathematical endeavor in a sense and in the classroom, the applied science. In the beginning, the conversation was around taking certain types of academic content and sort of putting those inside of games, where the question we were asking was, how do you begin to use the structure of the ways in which games work as learning spaces to actually develop um, a whole set of learning experiences for young people? They can, they can occupy the same space. Today, we played in science a game called Metric Mystery. The game was like Clue, you had to find metric uh, units and numbers. Once somebody shows me a card, my turn's over. Then it would go to Chris. My job was to uh, sit the kids down, explain to them the rules, and then have them play kind of a model game with me for a little while so that uh, they can understand how to play and then play it on their own. So um, that's really the best way to teach a game is to show the game. You know, you could hand them a, that's a, a page of rules, but they're not going to read it in as much detail and learn all the rules in the same way that if you explain it to them and show them all the moving parts and how they interacted, that's really the best way to teach a game. We shouldn't have called it the School for Digital Kids. I think that that tagline, although it was intended in the beginning and it did its work, it did lead to a lot of misperceptions. I don't think it could be called the Video Game School, but it could be called the Gaming School because um, we learn with games, but um, we have technology and we learn to use it like any other school. If you enjoyed it, you will have an opportunity to play this game throughout the next two weeks as we finish Quest 1. So our vision is partially about helping develop and articulate and communicate what a theory of learning is that takes games and play as a starting point. And it assumes that learning happens not just in schools, but also has to activate the after school space, the lunch, the club space, as well as the home space. And so we talk about that as connected learning. When we go to the grocery store, which I'll pull Duke along and he helps me to the grocery store, we get to the end of the um, checkout and we always play this game of like, who's gonna guess the total and who's gonna get closer? It's a lot of work to figure out how to pull games into your life, but if you figure out a couple that work, it makes a lot of the things much easier. And here is the New York Times coverage of the downtown school. Schools change very slowly. They're one of the most conservative institutions on the planet. And technology changes ever so fast. And, and there is a disconnect there. There's been a lot of attention paid over the past couple years to the notions of te bringing technology into schools. And we discovered very quickly that actually doesn't make much of a difference if you just bring a laptop into a school. Katie Salen is a professional game designer who helped found Quest to Learn. Quest to Learn is a one-year-old public middle school in New York City where the curriculum is based on video games. So it's a school that, ha that uses digital media as part of the curriculum. 
And it's also a school that's been designed from the ground up around the intrinsic qualities of games as learning spaces. Um, so that doesn't mean that kids are playing video games all day, but it does mean that the learning at Quest to Learn is structured in a game-like way. Uh, if I say, said to somebody, oh, you know, my students are playing video games in school, yes, but we're not playing video games. We're actually building video games, and there's a distinction there. Well, we make our own. Uh, we also play others to get inspiration, and we also kind of like try to modify, or as we call it, mod other games. We are building our own world, but we're doing it in teams. So kids are assuming roles: who's the set designer, who's the writer, who's the director, who's the costume designer, who's the scriptwriter. So all of those roles that these kids assume um, force them to work collaboratively. So it allows us to so, sort of take knowledge from one domain and express it in another, which is the definition of higher order thinking. We say that a game is a system, and systems are made of parts, and those parts are related to each other. Goals, space goals. Goals, space goals. Components, core mechanics. Components, core mechanics. When we look at fractions, we look at fractions as a, as a system that has components, the numerator, the denominator. How do those components relate? What happens when you change one? So systems thinking is really our curriculum, which is based on New York State standards, and it's a very deep and rich way of looking at the world. Well, what it's really studying is like systems thinking and stuff, so um, if you're ever gonna build like, uh, I don't know, like any sort of system, you would know how and you'd know why it works, and if you would observe anything, you would know why it works. I knew that there was gonna be like game-like learning and that we would learn game design. And then there would be a lot of media involved, and I really like those kind of things. So I was really excited to hear that, and I right away said, I'm going here, and um, I'm having a great time and learning a lot of stuff, only in a funner way. To me, one of the fascinating things is that he is, you know, totally engaged and, and doesn't want to miss time from school, and, and, right. and he's not a nerd. He's, he's really, he likes it. And also, they learn a lot of things about uh, every other subject, like every other school. But also computers for them and games and movies for them is a non-issue, you know, just like a tool. Tools like video games have become important enough that researchers are trying to figure out how they can help in all classrooms. At NYU, Jan Ploss and a group of kids are trying to identify what makes commercial games so engaging. It used to be that games were looked at as the time waster, just violent. And now I think the public begins to understand that there is a whole variety of different game genres and, and begins to understand that this is such a popular medium that um, uh, this might actually be something that uh, helps us learn. The industry knows how to build entertainment games. Uh, learning games is a very different focus, has very different requirements. Here we are still at the very beginning. I, I thought it was pretty weird. I thought the game would be boring, but they were pretty fun. Um, I actually enjoyed myself. My, um, I guess your parents won't bother you a lot with playing that game because it's like um, an educational game, so you can play as much as you want. We're clogging up together. <laughs> Games are incredibly complex, not only to design, but also to study. And in order to produce the kind of data that would convince policymakers uh, to allow us to uh, use those games on a massive scale in school settings, um, much more research needs to be conducted uh, to, to provide that data, and much more funding is required. It would be awesome to play video games at school. Right now, I would be so happy. I would be so happy I would cry. So you might be asking yourself, why are we focusing on this? What is the connection to social and ethical issues? Well, the downtown school offered its services to students from any background. And Sims writes in his book that the new school would equitably and engagingly prepare young people for the increasingly connected and competitive world and job market of the 21st century. So the thinking here is that students from any background could join Quest to Learn, they'd have to apply, but this was a way to try to eliminate the differences in access to educational opportunities that we have seen are actually growing, according to Linda Darling Hammond. Is this a story with a happy ending? Well, Sims is pretty clear up front that the results of this innovative experiment are actually quite mixed. 
He writes, long before I stopped my field work in 2012, the downtown school had become much like the schools that it had been designed to replace. And it was helping to remake many of the problems that it had been designed to remedy. A little bit later in the chapter, he argues that his book is about how genuine frustrations with the status quo and understandable yearnings for social change are converted again and again into seemingly cutting edge philanthropic interventions that not only fall far short of reformers' aspirations, but often also help sustain and extend the status quo as well as its problems. And we'll be digging into that more, but I want to end by closing out with our central question of the class, which is what should an educator know about educational technology? And in short, what we want to be thinking about is how does technology or technology-centric educational reforms actually end up sustaining and extending the status quo and the problems that exist in society? Okay, everyone, that's all for today. Have a great week. I'll see you in Canvas.